Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 705. Um, yes, I've got quite a few on my belt now. And the topic today is, um, have you fallen in love with yourself? And why is this important? Actually, have you fallen in love, dot, 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 with yourself? Why is this important? So, <laughs> that's a very convoluted statement. It'll make sense in a moment. Before I, introduce, before I get into the topic, let me introduce myself, put in the right order, and then we get started. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, you haven't heard this before. If you've seen my broadcast, you know what I'm going to say. Maybe. <laughs> my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I'm on primary work in the world, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. And that's what inspires my, informs my work and also why I do these talks every day, which started over two years ago now, actually after the election in 2016. So it's two and a half years almost. Wow. And this also called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart, which is now abbreviated to MFTM, so I have room to put longer titles on. Make sense? Um, today's topic is, well, today's episode is number 704. And the topic today is, have you fallen in love, dot, 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 with yourself, and why it's important? Where shall I begin? Hmm... Well, I'll preface this by saying, first of all, this is my Facebook Live, in case you haven't seen me before. It does go onto YouTube later on. I'll give you the links for that at the back end. That's another preface. And also, I'll preface it by saying, well, I'm not saying I have an ulterior motive, but I want to explain a couple of things and explain also why I'm offering, I've am offering. i got these two offerings I'll put at the back end. So there'll be a couple of links I'll be posting at the back end as well. You can check out a couple of things I'm offering that this will lead into. So it is a subtle introduction. So I'll let you know ahead of time. So it's not subtle anymore, it's blatant. Um, why I'm asking if you love if you fall in love with yourself is because we've been we as a culture have been trained by society to fall in love with somebody out there. Oh, one other preface. This is not about narcissism. Just to be clear, it's a lot more authentic and a lot cleaner than that. So let me preface that by saying that. So, first of all, self support, self care, self appreciation, self respect self-reliance, self-trust, all these different self-things are aspects of what I call self-love. But a lot of people out there, maybe not you, but somebody you might know, have more than enough, um, let's say this, more than enough opportunity to raise the bar on the self-support system. Because for me, self-love and self-support go hand in hand, which is why these two things I'm offering at the end of, the, end of this video, when I get there. However, for many people, they're constantly searching for love out there. And also, it's really looking for support out there too. That when they find the love of their lives or with their family, where they'll put the energy out there to get what they want back from them. Now, there's a certain, deal, certain amount of joy and pleasure in being um, received and supported from outside, absolutely. So I'm not going to say don't do that. What I am saying, though, is it does begin inside. That all of this wonderful, loving affection out there is wonderful to receive, but it really only works functionally when you actually already love yourself first. Because first of all, you're not filling up a vacuum, you're actually filling up an overflow, which is a much easier way to be joyful and in the flow of the dance of love and life, so to speak. Actually, there was an event last night where there was so much love and joy and connection happening there. I was so um, blessed and blissed, I use those terms. But it was such a, a great place to share and, and, and immerse in the experience of love going back and forward that I felt so um, uplifted by it. But I know, had I been there lacking in that, yes, it would have helped me to lift up, certainly, but it would have been a place of depletion that was being filled up and it would not necessarily, not necessarily been the most effective way of being connected. In fact, I would have been draining from them, which wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been kosher. So my... Um, understanding of this, my journey in this myself, is learning that when I want to have anything I want out there, like if I want to rely on other people, it always gets easier when I rely on myself first. That's been a lesson I've learned over many years in different, different journeys I've been on. And receiving that support from other people, receiving that gift from other people is a wonderful bonus. And that's a key word, it's a bonus. It's not, for, it's not as well implemented if you're taking it in as a need to survive, to thrive, to succeed in life. That 
is an inside job. That is where you begin inside by filling yourself up first. I mentioned earlier some of the qualities of what I call self-love slash self-support are these, um, just want to make sure I was just connected properly, are, are these components of ways that we can be more connected, more supported, and more respectful of who we are. Self-respect is another one, by the way. One of the biggest things we forget to do is to respect ourselves in life. And let me spin this out another way. It's very tempting. It's very easy to come up short when we compare ourselves with other people. In fact, for a lot of people I know, we run at a self-judgment that makes us feel less than other people. And frankly, frankly, <laughs> well, I was going to call it bullshit because it is. Because there's no way to compare against yourself against other people because none of us are the same. If you haven't looked around the world lately, even, even, even twins are usually different. None of us are the same. So to compare yourself with somebody else is ridiculous. You know, you can compare yourself unfairly saying, well, you know, somebody's 30 years younger than me, has achieved so much more success, therefore I come up short. You don't know that. There's no truth in that because what you're comparing is apples and oranges, so to speak. You know, somebody said it's like you can't compare your um, you can't compare your, your your chapter two with somebody else's final chapter. It's not possible. You don't know what people's, people's paths are. So forgetting the comparison is a first step to coming back to yourself. Now, sorry, I'm just not going to go with that. Now, self-respect, which is a whole other animal, so to speak, is a, is a form of self-acceptance, self-appreciation, self-forgiveness, all combined together as well. It's a fundamental piece of learning how to love yourself. Because it's hard to love things you don't respect. It's also, is it hard to respect things you don't love? Yeah, you can respect things you don't love, that's different. Okay, so just double checking made which way around it was going. So to, be, to love yourself almost guarantees that you need to be respecting yourself as well. Which is why I have this course that I have all these things I'm building toward, which are all these self-centric aspects. Again, self-support, self-love, self-trust, self-care, self-appreciation, self-forgiveness, self-acceptance, self-honoring, self-respect. All these different things are part of the course I'm teaching because all of this is like aspects on a diamond, or facets, excuse me, facets on a diamond, where the diamond itself is self-love and the light inside is yours. Ooh, that's poetic. That's kind of cool. But the thing that comes back to me more and more is that even, and I, and I was, sorry, let me back up a second. I was interviewed earlier for a summit that's going to be airing next month. Next month? Early this month. I've got to check the schedule. And we were talking about that because I said that my work's been shifting a lot in the relationship conversation now more and more towards self-relationship, self-support, and self-love. And I was speaking to her about how really it begins there. If you want to have healthy relationships out there, if you want to be in a very... Um, interactive loving experience with your partner or your family or your worker, co-workers, whatever that is, it has to start inside. It is frankly almost, I don't want to say impossible, it's almost impossible to be fully loving expressing out in the world without filling yourself up first because otherwise by doing so you deplete yourself very quickly and you end up being drained empty and less than loving. So to be more loving in the world, to be more effective, to be more connected in the world to love other people. I don't want to say you must, that's too much hard a word. I encourage you to learn how to love yourself first. To really um, honor and appreciate who you are because when you learn how much love supports you in being more effective, the more you realize how it's a tool to be more loving of other people. I said earlier this is nothing about narcissism because narcissism is a... Um, I'm going to avoid the psychological terms and use another way. A narcissist is someone who doesn't know how to love themselves. That's probably one of the best ways I can say it. Not saying they can be taught how to love themselves because most narcissists are immune to that because they believe that the only way to, to, to succeed is to take other people's love. Because they're very, basically, in a lot of ways, I believe narcissistic behavior is like energy vamp vampirism. They are pulling and sucking the life out of other people. And if you've ever been in a relationship with a vampire, you know what I'm... Uh, excuse me. If you've ever been in a relationship with a narcissist... <laughs> a vamp yeah, okay. Then you'll know what I mean. 
and I have friends and clients who've been in that situation where they express to me the same thing, they get the same experience, which is they felt like they were being used up, drained, kicked out, spat out, and depleted by the person they were with because the person kept draining from them. Because the reality is, a narcissist doesn't love themselves. They act like they do, they act like they got everything together, but they're really an empty shell looking to fill up from other people. Almost like a body snatcher, only it's an energy snatcher. So okay, so again, you vampires, body snatchers, enough horror movies. A narcissist is not a pretty person, pretty picture to be around. They look pretty, but they're not anywhere near that. So getting back to what I'm talking about, the falling in love with yourself is not a narcissistic habit. In fact, falling in love with yourself is almost required to be a fully effective person in the world. This is also different from egotism and ego-driven belief system. I'm talking about loving who you are as a person, honoring, respecting, appreciating the body, the being, the, the mind, everything that you are to be more effective in the world. I believe more than ever we need to be doing that for ourselves and for the world. I watch so many people out in the world, in the media and other places, come from a place of lack, pulling from other people, trying to control other people, trying to make other people their victims, their slaves, their followers, to make themselves feel better. If they truly love themselves, that wouldn't even happen. So I believe self-love is a key to freedom for all of us. Big vision, I know. So what I've put together, what I've put together, what I've, what I've I've created over the last six months have been tools and, and, pro and products that help people learn to love themselves. Because for some people out there, sorry, I'm straightening my, straightening my collar, okay. Um, I just noticed in camera washing my shoulders and like got bumps in them. <laughs> That's from the coat hanging off from my shoulders. Um, I believe that learning to love yourself can take some practice. I know for myself it took some time and, this, and I had some tools that I used to help myself with that and with some courses I took. In fact, some deep work I did. So what I've taken is a lot of stuff I've learned over the years and distilled it down to two different things. One is a guided self-love meditation practice with audio meditations in my own voice, which you can get on my web website. I'll give you the links for those in a minute. And also the new course I just offered, which is a brand new offering. It's a group, prog a group program, group course, group training um, called coming home to yourself because it is bringing you home to yourself to fill yourself up first to be refueled restored and rejuvenated in being in love with yourself because it's important it's vital for all of your relationships to love yourself first as I mentioned I think I mentioned so that is my newest offering and that is a pay what you want course which is a new offering I'm putting out there for those who want to try and check this out and jump in at their own level of investment so I'll put the links in the comments so you can find those two out and so you know what they are verbally in case you want to go check them out before I write them down. Um, BarrySelby.com Barry is my website. So BarrySelby.com forward slash self-love is the self-love practice, which has, again, the audio meditations in it. That's a purchasable download. And BarrySelby.com forward slash coming home is the description, brief description of what my online course is that I'm offering that allow me to check it out. If you want to join in, there's a link in the bottom of that to give me a call. So, so, so schedule a course so we can talk about what you're willing to invest can't be fairer than that um, so that's really it I want to keep it it's a fairly brief broadcast today usually it's a bit longer I think usually but I want to just get this out there because I'm really clearly on this soapbox to remind people remind you remind other people that self-love is a key that loving yourself is vital for you to have a healthy relationship with everybody but you have to start with a relationship with yourself first I think I've made my point pedantic enough. Okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox now and let you know where you find my broadcast if you haven't seen them before because I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and also onto my YouTube channel, which is also called Barry Selby. All my social media is Barry Selby, by the way, Twitter, Pinterest, all those things. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, YouTube channel I'd appreciate that. And the playlist on there is called Messages from the Masculine, which is where these all live. I think that's about it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or uh, inquiries, please put them in the comments below. You can do that in my Facebook Live or on YouTube. Or message me over social media if you want some direct help. And again, I'll put the links in the comments so you can check them out for yourself. I do invite you to check them out because they may, in fact, be the keys to open the door for the love you really want to get. Because it's usually how to give the, get the love that you want to have so you can give it to other people. I think that makes sense. Um, I appreciate you being with me. I thank you for watching. I'll be back in tomorrow at the same time, same channel. 
5 p.m. Pacific time right here. I invite you to come join me. And uh, that's about it. I invite you to take care of yourself as always, because frankly, if you don't take care of yourself, who is? With that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.